action. New YouTube camera, 40 grand. The new GoPro, GoPro 10. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. Okay, I'm wearing my sunglasses and I'm wearing my reading glasses so that I could see the camera and see that I'm in or out of focus. It seems every single time I move my eyes away from the screen, I go out of focus. And I can't just wear my sunglasses because I can't see this close because I'm 50 years old. If you know me and you hang out with me, this is usually my look, six eyes. Having fun playing with the cameramen, asking them lots of questions about technology and that kind of stuff. I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot about expensive cameras that I'll never use or be able to afford. Work this week includes this bandsaw box which I just put together. I don't have too much time on set to do stuff, but I am playing around. Maybe this will come out this week. Hanging out at the Melrose Flea Market this week, I got to meet a lot of fans. So guys, thank you all very, very much. It was a lot of fun hanging out. We had a lot of laughs with my brother, who's out of his mind. And a lot of people came by. So guys, thank you all very much. I won't be going to the flea market this coming weekend. A few people asked me in the email, and I apologize for that. I got late-breaking plans from a friend of mine. He's going to take me and show me around some stuff. That, But that might make for a really good vlog episode next week. <laughs> My buddy Dave Strain came out to the flea market and he wanted me to remind you to go check out the Ventura Makerspace. They're in Ventura, California, halfway between Malibu and Santa Barbara along the coast. We're the only nonprofit makerspace in Ventura County. We are a volunteer run and complete membership funded non for profit. The dues are currently only $35 per month. We have a tech space with 3D printing, lasers, CNC, shop space with woodworking, kiln, some metalworking. We have regular open houses on Sunday where non members can come by and try their hand at making something. Pretty good. We are open five days a week with hours designated to suit almost everybody. So go check out the Ventura Makerspace. MakeVentura.com. Make Ventura on all social media. Go check them out. Absolutely will not be at Make Affair in New York and I, I apologize. I've kind of hinted at it that I'm not going. But this is the official I will not be there quote. So I apologize for that. And I'm sorry that it was a false start. But it was a false start for me too. I had no idea I would be here in California the whole month of September. Here I am with Barry Katz. Wait a second, I've got to, <laughs> hang on. Okay, go. Time to time you hear me talk about Barry Katz, who was my brother's manager for a period of time, was the person that got me my very first TV show and taught me some valuable lessons, which I still consider today. Check out his podcast. If you're into the entertainment business, you'll learn a tremendous amount. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. Uh, I get boys for your sister. I'm sitting here with Barry Katz. Barry Katz, is an agent, manager in Hollywood, mostly to comedians, and every famous comedian you've ever heard of, you've worked for, Barry, right? More or less. I've tried. Emmy nominated. Emmy. I, <laughs> Emmy, Emmy loser, yes. Today on Emmy Day. The very first TV show pitch I ever did, remember we were on 19th Street in New York City, we sat together, and you gave me some advice on how to edit something down from 30 minutes to 7 minutes. On that tape, we sold the show to Fox. That's right, it was incredible. So and, I, uh, I learned I from the best. I was very proud of that uh, that show. You did a great job. Man, that was you, trash to you catch. And your brother, uh, what's his name again? <laughs> Joey, Joey. Joey DeResta. Yeah. <laughs> show that he was trash to cash. That's right. With, with a, a Joey DeResta. There you go. <laughs> you know the weird thing about watching this thing transpire for your audience is you get the feeling and realize what kind of director. Um, this man is. Uh, as I watch him, he's perfectly framed. Me, <laughs> I'm cut off on the crease of my forehead all the whole time. It's like unbelievable. Well, I thought we had some hair issues. I just use a hat, so. <laughs> I am fine with my. See, so watch me take my hat off. Yeah, you see, we're framed perfectly. All, right, <laughs> all right, I'm ready. All right, ask away. 
All right, if, if somebody was going to come out and try and be in show business, what is the one piece of advice you give to somebody? You just have to, in anything you do, it doesn't matter what profession you're in, you just have to be undeniable. And if you're undeniable, you cannot be denied. So that's, that's the thing that people forget. It's like, in everything you do, if you're great at what you do, you can't... It's very hard to fail if you're great at what you do. Yes, of course, you could be great at what you do and you could be on a street corner where nobody comes or you could be at a firm that nobody cares about. But eventually, you know, if you're in entertainment or whatever you're in, you're gonna make it if you're undeniable. It's not possible not to because nothing will stop you. No downfall will stop you and everybody gets crushed like a bug but if you do great work and you're doing you're gonna do wonderfully and if you create those wonderful relationships and you're kind and generous to people and you're sweet that's always a bonus yes there's a lot of assholes who work in the business and they're incredibly talented and they still work right but sometimes as we know and I don't want to mention any names you see people who have been very difficult and they don't work anymore. Yeah. And they were hugely successful. Right. You gotta be an easy hang. Gotta be an easy hang, as Carol Leifer would say on Seinfeld. That's true. And watch this. And if you don't do all those things, you sell tables at a flea market. Hey oh! Well Barry's podcast is industry standard. Go check it out. I'm a big advocate for it. That. I've learned a lot. Thank you, Barry. I appreciate you so much and congratulations on your show and your success. Thank you, my friend. And you and your brother Joey. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Barry. people ask about my brother John and my nephew Matt. A lot of people want to know what they're up to. In their own words, John and Matt. Tell everybody who you are and what you make. Hi, my name is John DeResta and I make uh, a lot of funnies and I make a lot of jokes. I'm a stand-up comedian for 25 years. When I'm not on stage being funny, I make rustic furniture with my son Matt and uh, my daughter Jonathan. And everybody wants to know where you and Matt have been. We've just been uh, on a hustle day to day doing custom orders and just the videos have just you know have not been top priority we were in a great shop a double car garage in north hollywood california and uh, out of nowhere the coffee guy behind us uh complained that uh, somehow some way our shop was loud or was unauthorized the city of la sent some kind of satellite looked down and saw that we were making stuff and we got kicked out overnight. You were in such an industrialized spot, it didn't matter. Yeah, it was somehow, some way, a, a phone call was made and we were, uh, I don't know, we got I have a shop in North Hollywood, California, right a couple blocks away inside an antique store. And then we sell here at the Melrose Trading Post. Are you pitching TV show ideas? I am not, I would like to be. I have as much juice as a banana here in Hollywood. It's a tough business. And right now I am uh, in flux. I'm in a neutral corner. Send some love my way. I'm looking and waiting for the next phone call. I don't know if it'll ever come, but I am doing three to five sets a week as a stand-up comedian, mostly at the Long Beach Laugh Factory, where I am killing it by talking about my man tits, my pajami, and my two-inch soft. I'm 690 days away from my Screen Actors Guild pension. Let's stay positive. Yeah. Love and respect. I guess. I actually have about three in the works right now being filmed. One completely done, needs to be just edited. Oh, no, a Adam Savage style steel Leatherman belt. This one, Matt? Yeah, that'll work. I've just been doing the hustle. Okay. A lot of work, a lot of custom orders, a lot of restaurant walls that need to be covered with wood. If anybody out here wants to help John and Matt reignite their fire for YouTube, give them a call. Maybe you can help. The sister wives are here. Yeah, the sister wives are here. We're here to eat for free. Yeah. <laughs> Pull in here. Now for the Q&A. This is why I'm wearing my glasses because the sh was out of focus and I gotta keep an eye on the screen. I learned this from Casey. This is from Mike Chung. What 
is there to eat at the farmhouse when people are over interested in a class is the food good taylor is an excellent cook but sometimes we hire people to come cook taylor just cooks because she wants to it's not because she has to this time my buddy derek is going to be the cook and he's going to make steak tip and burgers pasta chili you know all the food that keeps you fat question from paul missit have you ever thought of making your own boots in the way you've done say leather molding for the camera holster making boots is an absolute science one that i'm not good at taylor actually has made boots in the past um she's going to be working on a new boot project she just uh, bought a, a boot kit from our friend lisa sorrel check out lisa sorrel on instagram she makes cowboy boots and if you really want to see how real cowboy boots are made check out lisa's instagram channel so me no i'll buy boots or hire somebody oh from steve maker my buddy steve smith steve just started his channel so go check out steve he's just started his channel a couple months ago go give steve some love and support no question really just wanted to say thanks for the amazing videos and constant education and inspiration hug and kiss steve thank you very much buddy justin raymer are there tools you wish you had but can't justify having based on the cost floor space or other criteria yeah I want to buy bigger lathes and bigger milling machines, but they have no reason for them. I hardly really use the ones I have. They always come in a pinch when I need that one thing, and I'm like, oh, I'm so glad I have this machine. But I'm not like John Saunders where he's ramping up and getting into production of a lot of things. I want a Haas, but I have no reason to buy one. Not yet. Maybe one day. What is the main use for your Micra and your EDC? That's from Sean Fox. I use my Micra constantly for grooming my fingernails. Everybody that hangs out with me knows that I always have my micro and they use it for pulling splinters. Keep the knife sharp so it's the sharpest knife on me and the tweezers on the side and the scissors. From Chris Ritchie, how do you keep a project from getting too precious? How do you know when to walk away? It's a good question. When I realize I should have been done two days ago, put it aside and then I get back to it later. I always finish every. If it takes me three years, four years, five years, I always finish a project. Every project that's not done, it's just not done yet. From Stark Tropolis, Mark Burr. Berkner. Mark Berkner. What is the one thing you bought then instantly regret? Sometimes I buy a pair of jeans and I get home and they don't fit right and I just say I'll never wear them ever again and I just throw them in the closet. Taylor takes them and cuts them up and does something with them. Shirts, t-shirts, same thing. I buy a t-shirt with a graphic on it, I put it on, it's like I'm never gonna wear this again. As far as machinery, all the machinery I've ever bought always eventually finds a place in my life or a place in a video or a place in a project. So I never regret buying tools or materials. It'll always get used. And even if you don't intend on using it for a project, it'll sit around one day that project will hit you in the face and you go, oh, I got that material that I wasted my money on. Dave Bauer, Blue Barn Works. Recommendations for making a metal spatula thinking on thin gauge steel. If you want to make a custom spatula, go buy a couple of spatulas that are bigger than your project and just cut the spatula down to the shape you want. Any advice for starting leather work? Buy a tool kit or a simple projects first kit. Pretty handy with tools. Go on Amazon, buy a stitching fork. It's like the thing has a kit, it's like two, four, and five, maybe just one prong. It comes in like usually four or five forks together in one set. Get a couple of needles, nylon thread, and just start sewing things together. Just look at other videos like mine. Well, there's lots of really good leather workers on YouTube. I like to glue things together with PVA glue. That's the white glue I use. A lot of people also use barge glue. Really curious to know as a master of tools, is there a tool you don't own you would like to own? This is from Daniel McHugh. Right now I need a big CNC machine. That's what I really need. I need a 4x8 CNC machine, either from Laguna or from ShopBot, or CNC parts, somebody. That's a hint. Do you study to travel to Brazil? We have amazing woodworkers. No, but I was in Belize, the closest I've gotten to Brazil. And I met some really amazing woodworkers in Belize. And they had a shop that hadn't been cleaned up in like two years. There was a pile of sawdust like up to my ass. Look, look who's calling me. Jay Rivera. Jay, I have a good excuse. I'm doing the vlog. I'll call you back in a minute. From Graz Makes. Is that Evolution Miter Saw worth buying? Get quality cuts on metal and wood. The Evolution is a good saw. It cuts through a lot of stuff, but I personally don't like using it because it throws shards of metal everywhere. You'll find it in the back of your scalp the day you're done using that tool. The bandsaw is slow and steady. It doesn't blow your eardrums out. Little tiny pile of mist right behind the cut. When you use that big chopping miter saw, every time I'm about to make the cut, I close my eyes tight. Because if I don't close my eyes tight, something will get behind it. I don't want a metal shard going in my eye. That's not fun. And the blades don't last as long as you think. If you're not careful with them and you're cutting aggressively, the blades will burn out and you just gotta go buy a whole new blade. You can't sharpen it. What behind the scenes YouTube channel do you enjoy that aren't woodworking or metalworking? I like Philip DeFranco, uh, Casey, active self-protection, which is great for self-defense. Those are the top three off the top of my head. 
And Mike Schneider asked basically the same question. What are my favorite channels at the moment that don't feature making? Dr. Simon Flan, Jimmy DeResta having conquered CNC welding, woodworking, lasers. What is the next creative building hurdle for you? Blacksmithing and metal casting. Call me Matt Tubb asks, preferred instrument for sketching. Don't try this set. He likes paper mate, sharp writer, interested in my take. I like pencils, soft pencils. I mostly always carry these double-ended Sharpies. My buddy at Rebmark just gave me these with my name on them. I'm actually really enjoying using these. They're Sharpies, but they're a little bit more watery than a Sharpie and kind of a little bit more loose. I really like the old flare, the black flare pen. I, every once in a while when I see those, I grab those. Little Doggy Mike asks, what is your oldest woodworking machine and what might be your most aesthetically pleasing favorites? I like my 1911 Crescent joiner. I bought it in Springfield, Massachusetts on Craigslist. I really, really love that tool. It's just so incredible and I just always imagine the things that have been made on it. I guess the most sentimental tool would be my bandsaw. My dad bought it when I was a kid. I still have it. It's tucked away in my garage. I should pull it out and get it back in order. It's a 1940s Delta bandsaw, 14 inch, first bandsaw I ever used. And we have a, a nine inch Delta radial arm saw that's at my mother's house. That's the saw that I learned on that before a table saw. It's probably from like 1959, 1960. Last question from Rainer's Universe. What planet would I like to live on if I could live anywhere else? Probably the moon so I could watch what happens to the earth. See thunderstorms, hurricanes, and explosions. I just want to talk about a couple of upcoming appearances. I got to keep checking that I'm in focus, of course. Fabtech, November 6th to 9th in Chicago at McCormick Center. I will be there hanging out with the guys from Lincoln and a bunch of other YouTubers. So come check us out. Workbench Con in Atlanta, February 22nd to 24th, 2018. It's going to be a lot of YouTubers there as well. Go check it out. I'm going to put links below. Maker Central in Birmingham, England. Don't forget Maker Central, May 5th, 6th. 2018. So thank you for joining me. By the way, this is the 52nd vlog. That's a one year, one year of vlogging. So thank you for those that pushed me. I'm sorry for those that didn't want me to vlog. The majority wins. Thank you guys very much. Love and respect. They're making a TV show out there. You hear the noise? Ice chest.